Well, it's it's the aftermath this week of Splody Day. Yes. And every year in the aftermath of Splody Day, somebody blows off something. We have a collection of horrible Splody Day stories. And we have video. First, let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, where's my audio? Oh, it's down too low. Whoops. There it is. Ah. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience. Come here, handsome. Go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? So let's start, and I tried to find the news story behind this video. I really did. I could not. We have a video without a story? Yeah, but it's, it's, it did, I can verify it happened because it's visible that it happened. Let me get the, I, I want, I'll, I'll get the, the link for you. Yeah, here we go. Simba, come on, buddy. Why are you being a grumpus? Let's all sit back. I, I, I can't tell you where this happened. We'll probably find out. Only that it happened. And Oh, no. You know what? This is not the first time this has happened. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Someone in the Walmart set the fireworks display on fire. Now, I gotta love this dude on the phone who just walks out of frames like, yeah, oh, that's... Just like... <laughs> While meanwhile, behind him, all hell is breaking loose. <laughs> Everyone's acting like it's the fucking apocalypse. <laughs> and he's on his phone. Yeah, I, I can't get milk. Yeah, th that, 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 yeah, that section's on fire. on fire. The aisle's Sorry. on fire. Can't get milk. It, Tim, where are you? And uh, everyone out there is going again, again, and With yes, the Walmart being on fire. Yes, again, someone decided to light the the fireworks. And why? That's not a fun prank. No, that's jail. Yeah, that's really dangerous, and technically, it's also stealing, and it's not cool. That is, that is, go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go directly to... hurt a lot of people and set the Walmart on fire. And it's theft. And you suck. How does this happen twice? I would venture to say it's probably happened way more than twice. Just, we've only seen it twice. God help us. Um... Hey, hey, more fireworks and Walmart, our first actual story this week. Um, so uh, finding a good place to set off fireworks, it's it's big, tricky. I big guess. Big empty field. <clears throat> yeah. But some people want to be a little closer to the action. Yeah. This comes to us from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana. Rooftop fire. Yeah, rooftop fireworks to blame for Monday morning fire at neighborhood Walmart. That's a terrible idea. And I want to point out Monday fire. That that was this morning. Yeah, it's over. That is five four day, four five days after July fourth. You five missed it. Firefighters were called to a Walmart neighborhood market for a reported fire early Monday morning. It said it happened at a store at the 5200 block of Highland Road shortly after 6 a.m. Investigators believe someone was trespassing on the roof of the building, setting off fireworks. Authorities say the store did receive some minor war interior water damage. No injuries were reported at this time. Store employees are assessing damage to some of the store's stock. That's such a... Bad. Like, why would you even think that was a good idea? You set the wall. You set the Walmart on fire. But on any roof, like, why would you set off fireworks on a roof? Well, it makes the fireworks go higher, right? No. <laughs> it makes the roof burn down. <laughs> Why is it always 
Walmart with this shit. This is two Walmarts and two fireworks incidents and two firework fires. Like, I don't super love Walmart. I avoid it when I can. The outlet, the, the layout gives me anxiety. But why, why does this stupid, insane shit always happen at the Walmart? I don't know. I don't know. You notice how we call it the Walmart? We, no one calls it Walmart. It's always <laughs> the, the Walmart. Walmart. Like. Even though there's a billion of them. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. This, the fireworks, it's not the fire. Don't do that. Uh, well, next story is I, you know, on the show, I have a policy. I rarely, if ever, do stories where people get hurt. Yeah. Except when they do it to themselves. And Except they, when it's getting hoisted on your own petard. And they should have goddamn well known better. And this is one of those. And I'm going to send you the link so you can watch the video. There is video of this. Don't worry. It's not a graphic video, but there's video. Let's have a look, everybody. Photo health. Oh, photo. no. Look at this video. You can only ask your... All right. Watch here. Now, this is something you should not do, which is set off fireworks in your own hand. Mm -mm. That is a mortar launcher. And it blew up in his hand. Now, what's... You can't hold hold them. Now I want you to back up here and listen to this. This he is his his hand has been explosion. He got knocked down. Listen to his friends. They're laughing. His friends. Thought it was hilarious. Yeah, no, you need your hands for things. You need your hands for pretty much everything. Lakeland man was seriously injured after a firework exploded in his hand. Jonathan Soto, 35, of Lakeland, suffered injuries on his left hand and chest after he grabbed a mortar-style firework in his left hand and waited for it to ignite. The firework blew up in his hand, and EMS was called. And of course... Alcohol appears to be a factor in the incident. Gosh! You're sitting behind my chair, you little jerk. Don't, don't drink an explosive. No. Don't drink an explosive. What the, the fuck you have to If for no other reason, then alcohol is flammable. Hey, you, you want to see something? Watch this. It's like I've got a gun in my hand. Oh, God! No. It's like you've got a gun with something shoved in the barrel in your hand. Where is Amber? You want treats? He's like, no, fuck you. Hey, I, what's, what's even worse is his friends in this instance are giggling their asses off after he not only has his the, the firework exploded, not only has his ass been knocked down, Feels. Not only is he obviously in pain, they're thinking this is the funniest shit ever. Right. So your he, like, fingers? Yeah. It doesn't say, just as serious injuries. That how is that funny? Those are not your friends. Those are not your friends. You need new friends. You have bad judgment with fireworks. You have bad judgment with friends. Yeah. You need to start over. Yes. Yes, because if 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 you're if you get hurt and your friend's first reaction is to laugh at you, that's not a friend. That's I mean, if you like trip over your own feet. Yeah. And you're fine. Yeah. Fine. But when you blow your fingers off, that's said subjectively. Not. We don't know if he did or he did, but okay. you should goddamn know. It's, it's like don't drink and drive. Don't drink an explosive. Why are you being grumpy with me? Someone should take your damn lighter away from you. Oh, boy. 
you're still really? trying to you're still trying to coax Simba on camera. He was like happily purring in my lap until the second I turned the webcam on, and now he's being a butthead. He doesn't Why want to be on the internet. The cat is smart. He doesn't want to be part of the internet. Well, and now he's rolling on the floor showing me his belly. That's a like, trap. I love you. That's a trap. Why are you being a butthead though? You need to stop being a butthead. That's bait. Stop it. Don't smack me. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Tara? Oh, Tara, Tara, don't. Oh, hello. Are you <laughs> holding him by the scruff of his neck? Because that's how you don't get bit. <laughs> Hi, Simba. Hi. I'm being a butthead. <laughs> I don't know why you're being a butthead at me. Because you keep trying to put him on the internet. He doesn't know what the internet is. He's a cat. It's genetic. Yeah. Do I have my camera displayed on my monitor? I do. He's been watching the videos. He's enthralled by that shit. That's why I've been watching movies with him. Because he thinks television is amazing. <laughs> Let's move Which on. Is this is not ideal because he's already kind of fat. He, we have this tower with the holes in it. I keep going off on tangents. I'm sorry. And he tried to crawl in one of the towers, and he's a little too fat. You remember when Pooh would try to get through the hole, but he had too much money? <laughs> For like a full minute and a half, there was just a cat butt and back legs hanging out of that hole, wiggling around. What now, Grady? Too. Oh, oh. I, I have brought the Grady because everyone is asking. Hi. He's very sleepy. Because we need a cooperative cat. Hi, buddy. Oh. I have cats, and not a one of them is cooperative. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Simba is five years old. That is how old Simba is. And he is done with me right now. So let's look at a cooperative cat. He's purring. So let's let's move on to uh, this is not one of those stories where someone necessarily did something stupid. This is just one of those stories where I'm sitting here going, holy fuck. This is this is unsettling on many levels. This comes to us from the UK uh, near Newcastle. And uh, man gets stuck in melted tarmac. <gasps> Man had to be rescued by firefighters after he became stuck in melted tarmac. Oh, my God. An identified 24-year-old dialed 999 after his leg, left leg sank thigh deep into the road on a back lane in the heat area of Newcastle. Fire officers had to dig around him with a hammer and chisel before they were able to ease out his trapped limb. They put his lack of injury, foot injury, uh, or ankle down to him wearing, quote, his granddad's Doc Martens. So that's that's a vote for Doc Martens. How does that happen? Like, look at that shit. Mm. Spokesman for the fire service blamed the current heat wave, saying, during the good weather, please be mindful things like this can happen. Be more aware when you're walking around. Be aware of what? That the ground might fucking melt? Yeah, because I mean, look right. Th look at that. Just, just all of a sudden, you're walking okay, down the street. Swallow you up? How can you be mindful of that? The street's just melting. This is a thing that's happening. Welcome to the 21st century. The streets are melting. The fucking streets are melting. How many years do you think we got before it's like... Just big portions of, say, the United States are uninhabitable to go outside... Like where you live, for instance. How many years do you think you got nice. before Charleston cannot sustain human life? Uh, 20? 30? It, it already can't really sustain human life. I don't even know what the fuck we're doing here. It's it's already awful. It's We should just abandon it to the mosquitoes at this point. Mm. Yeah, I don't understand why people live in parts of the country where it never gets cold enough for all the bugs to die. <laughs> I'm a big fan of all those fuckers dying in the winter. And you don't have that. You don't have a point where all those little fuckers die. And I find that upsetting. 
No, they stay. They pretty much, we have bugs year round. Be more aware when you're walking around. Lest the fucking earth swallow you <laughs> up. Oh, okay. How are you supposed to be aware of that? You, just, you don't know. You, you, you never, you never can't tell. It's like a new game. Will today be the day? The street is lava. Literally. Ah, oh, look at this boy. At least the boy is good. My boy is good, just not right now. Hi. I know, you're sitting there yelling at Dan. You want to be let back in your room? Is that it? You miss your room? He was pacing in here before, and I couldn't figure out what the deal was, and I stepped out, and he ran out and ran back into his room, and I'm like, oh, okay, do you not want to be in here? And two minutes later, he was in the litter box, and I was like, oh... Well, at least you went. You knew where to go. What is Simba's opinion of Dan? He likes him. He's fine with Dan. <laughs> he thinks Dan's okay. He sings him the song of his people. I just, I have a, just a bur purring floof. You do. We have a big old marshmallow. He's like a tribble. <sighs> All right, moving on. I... It's bet there is one place that does not need innovation, and that is drunk driving. But we have seen quite a bit of innovation in drunk driving lately. We've we've seen riding mowers, front end loaders, yeah, all sorts of. Well, here's another one, and this is from uh, Donegal. Now, correct me on this; you might know. How do you say it? Uh, Gardai, Garda. Uh it's Garda when it's plural. It's Guardi when it's singular. Guardi. All right. Good. Because we're going to have to talk about them right now. This is from Ireland. Oh, boy. Yep. Drunk farmer's trousers fell and backside exposed during Garda pursuit. A drunk farmer who hitched a lip from his son on the back of his tractor exposed his backside after his trousers fell during a pursuit by Gardy. The driver of the uh, Massey Ferguson tractor appeared before... This is news in Donegal. <laughs> Donegal is not a small place. Like, Donegal is not the middle of fucking nowhere. The driver of the Massey Ferguson tractor appeared before the Letterkenny District Court court heard how the uh, guardy spotted an elderly farmer clinging to the back of a tractor on the night of November 7th, 2016. So they're just now getting to this. Uh, Guard Inspector Barry Doyle said guardy had been on routine patrol to the Kilross Junction. Tractor was being driven by a younger man, and the older man was standing on a link bar on the back of the vehicle. Tractor was being driven by Charlie McFadden, who is in his 40s, and his father was standing in the rear of the machine. Guardy, and this, this is, they were Doing clocking it. Uh, Guardy estimated that the tractor was being driven at speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour along the wow. hard shoulder. That's not safe. That's trucking. Yeah. That is trucking. Because if you're, I, I didn't so know. To read the cutest sentence in this whole article. What? The Garda were then forced to activate the siren on their patrol. <laughs> oh, Ireland, where activating the siren is news. 40, yeah, 40 miles an hour in a tractor. That's kind of, I didn't know they could go that fast. I didn't either. That's moving. But that that's unsafe. Upon uh, activating the siren, Charlie McFadden stopped the tractor, suddenly causing his father's trousers to drop, leaving his backside fully exposed. Well, it's like, do you remember? Did you ever? Did you ever see the Seymour butts for the car? <laughs> it's a little guy. Ah, uh, yeah. You plug it in. Window, yeah, and then you push. And them. he moons other drivers. I worked at Spencer Gift, so you know. I don't think this was intentional, though. <laughs> no, probably not. When interviewed, Guardy told court that Mr. McFadden was intoxicated. Why are you doing this? Someone pointed out, points out, who is it? I can't find it now. Drunk Higgins. Dun Donegal is the most isolated county in the country. Which is, like, Donegal is that county that's 
up in the north, but is not Northern Ireland. Yeah. So, pe- like, people kind of forget it's part of Ireland because it's way up there with that other country. But no, it's it's Ireland. I just, why? Why? Of all the... Because whiskey. <sighs> Just walk, man. Just walk. you're less likely to have your pants accidentally fall down. Yeah, but depending on where you are in Ireland, you could wind up in the ocean, though. <laughs> From walking? Walking drunk. Okay, yeah. And Donegal is a beachside county, so you could wind up in the fucking ocean. <sighs> that's that's. I swear to God, that's a, this is a story that could have come out of Alabama. I swear to God. <laughs> but it didn't. But it didn't. Of course, to, to activate their siren. I know. Oh, God. I know why. Because this is so commonplace in Alabama. Nobody even notices anymore. Yeah. We're exporting. Oh, that's, that's just old Jimmy. What? Oh, his pants fell down again on the back of the tractor. Yeah, that happens. Sometimes, sometimes he can't hold his liquor none. We're exporting stupid. Oh, and oh, God damn it. Oh, I, here's an old friend back from 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 the uh, the great beyond. Remember bath salts? Oh, God. Remember how they were supposed to have gone away? We weren't seeing them anymore. Yes. Nope. So it's like Ireland's West Virginia. No, that's Limerick. And I can say that because I'm half Limerick. Clinton County, Pennsylvania, suspected bath salts, green lasers, and fireflies. State police say they're all part of the story that put two people in jail. Troopers say 30-year-old Jesse Shields and 22-year-old Catherine McCloskey were high on suspected bath salts during a bizarre chain of events uh, early Saturday morning. According to investigators, the pair from Clinton County had a, quote, bad trip and thought that fireflies were green lasers coming from aliens who were after them. Here's the thing. Even if that were the case, shooting at lasers is going to do fuck all. Like, shooting at the laser beam? Not going to help you. It's not a corporeal thing. Like, you got to find the source of the lasering. State police say S.H.I.E.L.D. fired his revolver in the air to scare away the lasers. That is a phrase I had to read tonight on the internet. Fired a revolver in the air to scare away the lasers. Are lasers known to be afraid of loud noises? You know what? I don't even think fireflies are afraid of loud noises. Have you ever seen, you've seen fireflies, right? Oh, yeah. Summertime, you get outside, they're just lazily blinking their way. They don't give a shit. They don't give that's a shit. Be, that's got to be a great life, except that you live for like five days, probably. And your asshole lights up, so. And yeah. my cats torture you to death occasionally. Um, after firing the revolver, they ran to a nearby home where he asked the homeowner to call the cops because someone was chasing them. Okay, sure. While Might have been the cops, because you were shooting at bugs. While the person was on the phone with 911, Shields allegedly broke a window before he left the home, then went to the next door neighbor's house and broke another window there. State police say the owner of that home was able to get the gun away from Shields. That was kind of dangerous. Who asked if he could take a shower to get the goo off his body because it was burning his skin. Mm-hmm. Why would you do this drug? Why? What is the upside of this drug? This is like a, a pharmacy. This is like a felony in a pill. Yeah. It's like, hey, do you want to break the law tonight? Here you go. <laughs> You do your bath salts and you spin the wheel of felony. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to eat another human? Are you going to shoot at fireflies? 
are you gonna, I don't know, run around naked yelling about the apocalypse? Like, I don't do, don't do this drug. This is the worst. I can't say this is the worst drug because someone's going to invent the worst drug next. Yeah. Where did they get this? And I, I honestly still maintain that meth is the worst drug because it's the one that can kill you while you're making it. Uh, and that's bullshit. I I thought I thought this this drug went away. Yeah, I, I haven't heard about these in a long time. And now I it's we're on to fake heroin that kills you now. Yeah, or fake marijuana. Yeah. Which is kind of stupid because the real marijuana is getting legal, guys. Why do you need the fake shit? And the fake shit seems really dangerous. Yeah. And the real shit is not. Like, they think the real shit can cure Alzheimer's, maybe. Just, I, I have yet to read one of these stories where it couldn't have been solved simply by taking pot instead. Yeah. I, I, I've I'm, heard someone getting baked and shooting at fireflies because they thought they were aliens. I'm not exactly... I hear about people getting baked and trying to write that movie, though. <laughs> Dude, you know what would be, like, so cool is, like, fireflies were actually little aliens, and their butts were lasers, and they're just waiting for the invasion. <laughs> I'm not exactly, like, a marijuana evangelical, evangelical but... And you give me the option of someone doing bath salts or or, or doing marijuana, and I'm like, dude, yeah. smoke That's that fucking doobie. Oh, yeah, they're talking about crocodile? Crocodile's fucking horrible. They call it that because it burns your skin into scales. It's fucking horrible. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, that fucking, yeah. oh, God. Yeah, I remember that one. Just like that Eastern European shit. Yeah. That was messed up. Well, we have one more traditional story tonight. Traditional for us. Oh, God. And it's from Canada. Oh, Canada. Now, you know how the, the U.S. Post Service uh, motto is neither wind nor rain nor sleet nor, nor dark, dark of night, night yeah. will stop the U.S. mail going through? Well, the Canadian Post Service needs to add an addendum to that. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow, nor dark of night, nor penis. Naked man driving Canada post truck causes multi-vehicle trash on Crowchild Trail. It is not known if the driver is an employee of the Postal Service or if the vehicle was stolen. I oh, think it was stolen, Bob. Oh, now you love me again? Are you sure, though? You're going to rub on my legs now? I, I this the very fact that it could be either or. It's like which bad option do you want? I mean, does it matter at that point? <laughs> You're well, not the, getting your Amazon today. <laughs> <laughs> does it matter if the naked guy's an employee? Not really. I'd like to see. You ever ever done the status updates for yeah. your and seen? Package delay because of inclement weather. Package delay because of inclement penis. Do you have, they text a, our, our Amazon, because we have, we're near a distribution center, so we have little Amazon white trucks that deliver on their own. Mm. And they like text you a picture of the guy put physically placing the package on your step. <laughs> like they text you a picture of a dude's hand holding the package above your step. And they're like, your package has been delivered. Except in this case, it would be a dick pic. So... Yeah. Yeah. Um, rush hour traffic along Crowchild Tra Crow Child Trail was disrupted Wednesday afternoon when a naked man driving a Canada Post truck hit several vehicles before running into a convenience store. According to Calgary Police, the call came in shortly before 5 p.m. when several people reported the Canada Post vehicle driving erratically along Crowchild Trail uh, south of Glenmore Trail. Vehicle allegedly struck up to eight vehicles wow. before the driver ed exited the Canada Post truck and went to a nearby convenience store. The driver, described as a white male in his mid twenties, was not wearing any clothing. A lot of people in the chat doing the dick in a box joke. <laughs> 
I'm going to say I think the that's not the type of post people were hoping to have delivered. No. How does this how does one end up in this situation? We're we're starting in the in media res here, folks. We, and that happens all the time with the naked stories. They never tell us how the crazy person wound up naked. Yeah, it's just boom. The the what movie opens <laughs> and there's a. We're gonna try it again. Oh. Buddy, you're too fat. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. You're too fat, buddy. Local <laughs> bear. But for the love of how, how do you get in this situation? I, I don't know. <laughs> Naked in a truck full of mail, hitting everybody. And because, and, and the reason why it's important, whether it was a uh, Canada Post employee or just stolen, is liability. Well, yeah. I mean, it does legally make a difference. Yeah. Because th there's someone at Canada Post going, oh, please don't work for us. Oh, please don't work for us. Oh, please yeah. don't work for us. Oh, please don't work for us. Somebody in like HR and legal is just like, please let the truck be stolen. Please, please, God. I've been a good person. Just let the truck be stolen. Now, I can understand stealing a mail truck if you're trying to steal the mail. Not stealing a mail truck because you're naked and you want to hit some cars. And then go get a Mountain Dew. Yeah, it's like, hold on a second. I need to hydrate. Yeah, you gotta hydrate. Gotta hydrate. Naked pages. It's very important to hydrate. You don't. You don't want to do that shit dehydrated. Uh, Shrivels everything up. No good. No good. Just that's just. You never know when a naked person's going to ruin your day. You really don't. Even in Canada. And usually they're so polite. Just that's the first thing we learned this week. Out, out of at any given moment, a naked person can ruin your day. Suddenly, penis is standing beside you. <laughs> I just and standing beside you and smashing your fucking car. Yeah. How what? How do you tell the insurance dude about that one? Can you describe the accident? Well, a naked guy in a mail truck hit me. <laughs> no, really. No, really. No, really. That's that's what happened. No, we we didn't the... exchange information. No, <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't get his insurance info because he didn't have his wallet. <laughs> and if he did, I didn't want to know where it was. <laughs> um. We've learned that uh, uh, the uh, bath salts still exist, and they're still horrible. Yeah. Don't do don't, this drug. Don't do this drug. Just, it's a terrible drug. Just do pot. Come on, man. Just do pot. Just do pot. Drink, please. but not to excess. If you've if you got to get high, just, just have a joint. If you're really hard up, sniff a Sharpie. <laughs> like... Bake some brownies. Get a li get like it was edible lollipops or some shit. Just yeah, just... there are safer ways, man. We've we've learned that. Well, a a dude's ass on the back of a, a tractor is news in Donegal. Yeah, <laughs> the the guard having to turn on their sirens is news in Donegal. I kind of want to move to Donegal. Because it sounds like shit's not not a whole not a whole lot is going on there. I don't even know if the police carry guns in most of Ireland. I want to go there. I don't even know if the guarding carry guns. Like, it's a big prank in my dad's hometown. I think I told you about the big statue of Bill Clinton. Yeah. Bill Clinton sits outside the local guard station, and his golf ball gets stolen <sighs> all the time. Like they've replaced this little bronze golf ball. I don't even know how many times, but that's like. But that's the big crime wave in Valley Bunton. <laughs> is the damn kids keep stealing Bill Clinton's the golf ball. It sounds like a wonderful place. Somebody did a few years ago vandalize the uh, the Stone of Destiny at the Hill of Tara, which is a prehistoric 
well, maybe not prehistoric, but it's a pretty important historical artifact. And some little shits vandalized it. We've learned that uh, the future, 21st century means if you walk along the street, you have to be aware the street could melt. The street could eat you. This, the, that's, a, that's a thing you have to worry about. That, that is a thing that can happen now. You, you, the street, yeah, that's a thing. Um, we've learned don't drink an explosion. That's No. That's a bad combination. And also another bad combination, fireworks in the Walmart. Stop setting off fireworks in the fucking Walmart. The people at the Walmart do not get paid nearly enough to put up with your shit. Fuck, the, 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 all of the restocking, all of the cleaning, all of, do you know who takes care of that? The fucking Walmart employees. Who make like, I don't know, like a dollar fifty an hour or something. However little they can possibly get paid, that's what they make. Yes, I do have my own hill. Um, the Hill of Tara, historically, was the home of the great High King of Ireland. And the Stone of Destiny, the Lee of Fall, if, I think it was, the, if the, the true king, if he touched the stone, would hear music or something like that. I just... I, it's not really my hill. Somebody got really mad that I said that once. If, Obviously, if, it's older than me. If, if, <laughs> if the Walmart employees... If the Walmart employees find out that you set their store on fire, there's no, like, there's no one the, pe the Walmart calls to fix except the people who already work there. Yeah. Who know... I, I pretty much know fuck all about cleaning up after a fire. Do you? No. But they have to anyway, because that's how retail works. Yeah. So it's that fucking job. If they find the out... The store has the biohazard kit that you hope you never have to use, which is like if somebody takes a shit in the store, because technically that's a biohazard. All I'm saying is if the Walmart people find you, they will kill you. And I, I mean, won't... Probably not. They No. They will, and I won't blame them. I don't know that we want to paint all Walmart employees as potential murderers. Have you been to Walmart? 